my friend Chris Brainer, who ran a company called iMagica for a long time, always told me that the projectionist is the final editor of any movie. Think about that. This is how we get movies these days. And actually, this is how movies are made these days. Fully digital until they're scanned onto a piece of 35. Projectionists in movie theaters are less needed. We're needed, but we're less needed. When we were needed back then, we had single screens. We had operators that needed to change reels every 15, 20 minutes and trim lamps and make sure tubes didn't fizz out in, a, in an amplifier that we were needed. And we don't have projectionists in movie theaters anymore. We have them for years. Do you think they care about what's on that screen? Do you, you think they care? No, they thread the machine, they set the timer, and they walk away. I know they run little trailers, little snippets that say, uh, if there's a problem with the projection of sound, let the management know. Uh, isn't that the management's responsibility to know that? Why should I have to get off my, my keister to tell them they have a problem with it on, on the screen? Once I saw that, I knew the trade was dead. As soon as I saw that. When you go to a movie theater and you spend good money to see a movie, you want it projected correctly, don't you? You expect that level of service that you're not getting anymore? So, we have a release print of Garden Party. Uh, Sony Classics print, 35 millimeter. And of course, that's not the title of the movie. For security reasons, they don't put the titles of the movies on movies anymore, pre-release. That's been going on since Star Wars. I really feel like I am the last of, of a long line of men who preceded me who entertained audiences and were required to be in a projection room to do that. I come from a, long, from a very long generation, which will probably end with me, of showmen. I consider myself a showman. The only thing that's going to save the motion picture theater is the experience of the audience, the ability of having an audience with you as you're watching. Now, there's nothing in the world that looks like film. Nothing looks like it. And it's a very special look. I don't know if you can walk into a theater and take a look at that screen and tell me what's being projected, but I certainly can walk in there and tell you, A, the source, B, what it was from, and see if it's film or not, without even looking behind me. I, I take great pleasure in, in showing uh, in running for, for a, a, a good-sized audience. I don't like running for two or three, you know. It's, that, for me, is no fun. Ooh. Put this on the head. No, it's real one. The largest theater I've projected in is probably the Universal Amphitheater. It's about 7,000 people. Yes, they were happy when they left. Uh, smallest theater, it was called the Art Theater. We were running porn. It was, a, it was a grindhouse. It ran 24-7 pornography. If I'm coming to a 5 o'clock show, I want to see it at 5. If I'm coming to an 8 o'clock show, I don't want to wait 5 minutes or 10 minutes. I want to see it at 8 o'clock. But that's just me. So we're going to start the show soon, in about a minute and a half. This place runs like the army. They want their show to start exactly on, at, on time, and we're starting at 2 o'clock. Most places I will get a call to hold and wait here. We just go on time. So we're coming up on showtime. It's 1.59. And as soon as we hit 2 o'clock, we're going. I've never gone down here in my life. I mean, we've never had a show go down. That's the pleasure that I get out of this job, is by running a quote-unquote good or perfect show the way it's supposed to be run. One of the first movies I projected was Bye Bye Birdie. I worked the first three multiplex theaters that were ever built in Los Angeles. You walked into a job absolutely cold, and you had to get that thing running in an hour. Do you think you would learn on the job that way? I, I grew up in, in New York and the theaters that we got to go to were the last vestiges of the movie palaces. I ran 
a movie for a director who was who shall remain nameless. Uh, the reason he'll, he'll remain nameless is because he was in here with his entourage, a very famous young director who was completely coked out. And I ran his premiere here of his movie. And for the life of me, the entire run, I was focusing this goddamn movie. I couldn't, I couldn't hit a focus on it. The first time in a long time I've ever had this problem. So he walks into the room after the show is over and he's really feeling his oats. And the first thing he shouts at me is, you ruined my movie. And he takes a punch at me. He takes a punch at me. He said, the focus was out. I said, I'm trying to focus your movie the entire show. But I intended for that thing to be out of focus. But he doesn't tell anybody that these scenes are shot purposely out of focus. End of story. I cannot go to a neighborhood theater and watch a movie. I cannot. I see film that is in first gen relation prior to release print. I see what it's supposed to look like. How many audiences sit through the credits before they leave? I know I've done a good job when they sit through the credits, and 99% of the time everybody sits through them. Uh, love of movies and entertaining people, that's why I'm here. That's the only reason I'm standing here.